it's Peter Mead, and in this video I want to go over some information about the anatomy of an optimized blog post for you. So here uh, I have a whole bunch of bullet points I've made about this, and over here I've got some diagrams of what it looks like in the back end of WordPress when creating your blog post. So, first of all, let's talk about the, uh, the titles and the H1 tags. And here I'm saying, titles can be front-loaded with keywords near the front. So, what does this mean? Um, also, we use modifiers like best and guide. Obviously, there's a lot more to titles than this, but let's just drill into what this means in the WordPress editor. So. When you're in the creating a blog post, you have a look at your first little section there, which is the article title. And uh, what you what you see in here is that is the title of the article. But it also, in most cases, uh, when WordPress is uh, the theme is created for WordPress, that this is also your H1 tag. So it automatically, you kind of puts it into your blog post and here we go, you've got uh, a nice little H1 tag for your blog post title. So uh, what I would just say here is that our keyword, in this case our keyword is Godzilla sunglasses, and uh, what we're saying is that your, your keyword is loaded near the front of this title. And here we're also using the modifier, which is best. So you know, people might often search for best Godzilla sunglasses, which might become your keyword or an extended keyword. So, but here we're saying best Godzilla sunglasses for laser weapons. So if you're interested in that kind of thing. But uh, maybe you're not. But anyway, the point here is that uh, titles are very important, uh, not only to explain what your article is all about, but so the keyword and also really importantly, is your is your um, topic that you're writing about? So a topic that you have strategically chosen. Now, what I'm what I'm not talking about here, but what I'm assuming is that you're writing these blog posts as a part of a content marketing strategy, and part of your content marketing strategy would include having a really solid keyword research, and the keyword research which would identify all your topics and Specifically, on your website, you'll have services and products that you that you want to promote and sell, obviously. And those those services and those products really should be kind of the backbone of what your keyword research is all about. And so, any sort of articles or blogging, promoting things like that, should really be you know talking about. The kinds of topics which are going to help to um, build up that layering of the content to uh, help inform your, uh, you know, to uh, help go further with your, uh, with your marketing in general. So let's go on to the next section, which is uh, yeah. So we've gone through titles, use modifiers. So the next section, which is the permalink URL. So also another very important thing, and of course in WordPress we see this little thing called a permalink. And um, uh, so over here we've got the permalink here, and what what we're saying here is um, is that what what should you do for the URLs, right? So what we're going to do? So use friendly URLs, right? Don't use URLs that are kind of long and haggard or hard to read or yeah. So what about what about also keep it short and readable and include your target keyword in the URL. So in this case it's the permalink, right? So but over here we're saying Godzilla sunglasses. So you know uh, gorillawild.com forward slash Godzilla sunglasses. And uh, yeah sometimes you know as opposed to you know what what the permalink may if we don't edit that permalink and change that around a bit we may end up with you know a really long one which is the best 
you know, Godzilla sunglasses for laser weapons could end up being the full URL. Nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it just might not be quite as readable, quite not quite as shareable, that sort of thing. So it's worth thinking about. So let's talk about what happens when you get into the actual body of the article as we're editing. Images, and multimedia. So have a think about it. You want great looking images. You want images that are going to catch people's attention, uh, people that look, look good. And uh, over here, of course, we have Godzilla with his laser sunglasses on. And he's blowing up a building and, yeah, just having a bit of fun. But uh, certainly, certainly uh, something that's topical. But also what a lot of people forget is when, you, when you've got an image, you've created an image and uh, you know, you've saved it on your desktop, whatever, you're about to upload that image and it's something like, you know, 5497632.jpg. What, what is that? It's nothing. So you need, to, you need to rename that image and make it readable into something which is, um, which, which something means something. Also, you know, readable file name, include the keyword in the file name. And uh, also, you know, this just helps, it helps Google, it helps Bing, it helps people when they're, you know, so uh, your images might have more of a chance of appearing in image search and you can be found in more ways, you know, as people searching for things. So uh, it's worth doing. And of course, the alt attributes, which is a really important thing, which is often forgotten about. It's an old, it's, it's was originally designed because, uh, you know, back in the days, the World Wide Web Consortium were making rules and the idea was that, you know, visually impaired people should be able to, you know, benefit from the alt attribute and people, the thing is you type in there some descriptive information about the image in the alt attribute and this is read out by screen readers. And so, uh, this equality thing, right? Uh, but it's also it's also another way of getting more information uh, about your image. It's worth doing. And also, please don't upload huge images. They're just going to slow your website down. And uh, just compress those images. Help speed things up. And include other types of images, videos, diagrams, anything which is going to help to get your message across within the article and also things that people can engage with. That's why videos are good, uh, you know, more just more pictures of Godzilla and <clears throat> it's just really worth uh, making this into more of an experience when people are reading your article rather than just a whole bunch of words they need to read because uh, often, you know, people don't really read properly I and mean, I often just skim through find the headlines when I find what I need, I can go and drill in. It's typical of how people uh, consume this sort of information. So let's get into the next thing, which is very, very important as well, which is your internal and outbound links within your articles. And uh, yes, there is a bit of a there is a bit of a um, a question around a lot of people who own websites, especially businesses who are not really, uh, who may think that somehow it's going to hurt them to link out, that maybe somehow people are going to read their article and then click on the link and go away from their site and never come back. You know, this kind of thing, uh, which, is, which, is a very, which is a valid point. Uh, however, um, the, way the, the way the internet works is, is that it is a, it is a web um, and it is a, it is a network and so the idea is that you need to have links, you need to have links to other resources on your site, and you need to have links to other resources off your site. The idea is make sure they're always good quality, but this just helps the internet go around. I mean, it's, it's an internet, so this is the idea. We're, we're linking, it's an internet. So, but just do it, you know, we just want to avoid the spamming, avoid anything which, you know, comes across as manipulative or, you know, unnatural. So what I would say is, yes, it's important to link to um, other pages, link, link to other pages on your website that you want to rank for. It, very important, right? So going back to our keyword research, you have 
a whole bunch of services, products, things that you want obviously to sell on your site. So you want more people to go to your services page, make an inquiry. So the idea is that we would place an internal link to you know one of those services pages with some very with some appropriate anchor text, that sort of thing. So place a few internal links within your article. And you know, the idea is that well, we hope people will click on those links, right? But if they don't, it helps Google crawl and go through to your other pages that and it shows importance and relevance. So link to uh, link to high quality external resources. So this is also for relevance. So we obviously someone out there on the internet has also written about our topic. There's very few topics that haven't been written about yet. And you know, quite often we do have an authoritative source, um, whether it be Wiki or some other you know, government website or a very highly regarded website that already has covered our topic and has some very useful information, specific information to back up our arguments you know, within our articles. So the idea is, yes, we want to put an outbound link. We want to link out to those articles within the content, use the appropriate anchor text. You know, oftentimes it's mentioning, it's using the brand name as anchor text or uh, that kind of thing. So uh, it's definitely worth doing, but please only go and do it to high quality, good quality sites, sites that are very relevant and sites that are, that are uh, trusted. Obviously, you don't want to link to spammy sites, right? Let's go to um, the placement of the placement of these links. You know, the location within the article, and also the surrounding text. Um, and you know, th there's a there's a there's a patent which Google did years ago, and it's called the reasonable surfer model, uh, or some people call it the intelligent surfer uh, theory. This is the kind of thing we're talking about. The idea is. You know, when someone goes to a web page, what do they? Where do they expect to see the most relevant information? And if they're looking for more beyond the article, what are they going to sort of click on? What are they going to? Where are they going to go next? And um, so this is this is why we talk about uh, the importance of where you're placing the links in your article, and also the surrounding words around it. Are the words around it relevant? So it's context and I mean, I guess the perfect example of this is when you look at Wikipedia, and within the first few sentences, they have very, very highly relevant external links, you know, links to other articles, or links to other Wikipedia pages um, within, within, you know, the, high, the most prominent areas of the site. Of course, there's, there's a lot more to Wikipedia, I don't, I'm not going to explain it all in a few minutes here. But certainly, certainly, um, this has a bearing. And so it's giving relevance, it's giving importance. So if we place an external link high up in the first few sentences, you know, within our article, um, it's, it's showing, it's, it's, it's kind of showing, um, you know, Google, Bing, it's kind of showing people, hey, this is really important, and it's highly, it's highly likely that that will get a click through. So that may be, and that, that's possible, that's what you want. Uh, it's possible that's what you don't want. So it's just worth thinking about that and putting it into context. So let's look now into further down into um, the readability and the structure of the article. And so files, uh, so, so, so flesh score, flesh reading score. Right? So if you've been using Yoast or anything like that, you'll know about this reading score. But it's really about how readable is your article. And there's a score, there's kind of some metrics people have made uh, around about, you know, um, things like um, how long are the sentences, are they what structure are they written in, what tone, all kinds of things. So definitely worth, worth uh, looking at that. And um, also including other sort of uh, topical supporting keywords, related keywords, this gets into a whole bunch of stuff about semantic search, which I won't go into here, but uh, basically, you know, the idea is that you are talking about a certain topic, an article, uh, 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 
a topic and uh, in this case we're talking about Godzilla sunglasses. So what about other things like, you know, laser sunglasses is another keyword. What about things like um, eye, laser eyewear? I don't know. It's just other, um, th this is just, it's talking about all kinds of things like hummingbirds going to uh, pick that up and help to understand more meaning. It's getting into the intention of the searcher. What are they looking for? So definitely worth looking at that. And also, um, let's get down to the conclusion. It's very, very important. As people are reading down your article, if they make it to the end of your article and you've got a solid conclusion with some call to action, something else. Because people read, read your article, they're looking for the next thing to do, right? So if you've got a good solid call to action, there's a good chance they may take that, depending what sort of a leap they have to take to go to that next level. But in particular, what I would say is an internal link is really good in this case, or you know, a contact us form, something like that. When a phone, for a phone call, a phone number, yes, play, place that there. They may not call immediately because make, taking that step to you know, pick up the phone and dial that number is something that is, um, you know, it takes them away from their phone. They may be doing this in their lunch break or, you know, at night in front of the TV. So I would say that's something else to think that maybe that's not always going to happen straight away. Uh, but anyway, so so that's basically, um, I've gone through the whole structure and I've gone through the, the layout of your article. Let's go through a few more things on, you know, in particular, like when you're on that publish button. And if you're using the Yoast, SEO plugin, you know, which I like. There's other there's other plugins you can use, but please don't get hung up on the whole thing about having the green traffic lights. You know, um, you've got so, it, but but it is in, it is kind of um, a good guide. So if it's, if it shows you the readability is good and it shows you the SEO is good, you know, it's a good idea to have that before you click that publish button. So also please pay attention to uh, your categories. And so this also depends on how you've got your taxonomies configured. Have you no indexed some categories or maybe you've optimized the categories uh, instead of no indexing them. That's fine, whatever's happened there, but please just don't go ahead and publish your article as uncategorized. It just kind of doesn't look good. And uh, if you're using tags or not, but it's, it's worth spending some time putting some tags in there. And uh, look, it's possible if, you're, if you've optimized your taxonomy for the tags, it's possible that, you know, you may get found for some of those tags. Yeah. Um, featured image is another one because, look, it's worth, it's worth doing. If you've got your theme, your WordPress theme has been created that makes use of a featured image, then uh, this is the kind of thing that when someone shares your article, often it's a featured image that appears in their, whether they've shared it on Facebook or Twitter or somewhere. So it's worth um, having a featured image and having it set up on your, on your blog list so the featured image shows, it's kind of good. Uh, so Yoast, um, here we're just drilling into it a bit more about the Yoast plugins. I mean, obviously this is a very poor visual representation. My hand drawing is not so great, but uh, definitely Yoast. So uh, think about the SEO title and it can be different from your main title um, you know, think about the meta description, write something, hand write something that makes sense and this is your nice little opportunity to appear nicely in the search engine results and uh, to drive more click-throughs, right, to your site. So also think about the focus keyword and this it just helps you stay organised as you're doing your article. So obviously there's a, there's a lot more to on-site SEO, uh, to optimising these blog posts, but here, I hope this has given you enough now to use as you're working, doing your blog writing, to be able to go, so it's the anatomy, uh, the anatomy of an optimised blog post. Now, any questions, please feel free to follow me up. Other than that, have a great day. I'll see you soon.